good to mingle the church together. Amen. If you're not doing anything Friday night and you want to come over to the sanctuary and be here and help us uh, to encourage the meeting and encourage the Haitian families and to uh, be able to encourage uh, the meeting itself for the Lewis, keep that in mind. Now, the tabernacle is always busy, and uh, I imagine the meeting will be in here because we'll be cleaning and working in the sanctuary. So that's that's Thursday night, tomorrow night, the usherette. Then that's Friday night, the uh, work of the evangelism of the, the Lewis, the Haitian work, and people want to join that and come in and be a part. And then Friday week, February the 3rd, Brother Terry Schoen's meeting, get ready for the convention of all of our men that possibly can come and serve during that meeting. All right, these are three things. And then I, I want us to be mindful of um, the grocery list. Did, did you get this in your bulletin Sunday? No. Uh, if you got this, or if you didn't get this, there's a copy on the bulletin board, and we'll try to, by the weekend, have the sanctuary open for service and worship try to be back in the sanctuary by Saturday night. So look on the bulletin board, and there's a copy of grocery, this is the grocery list, needed for the convention. And you can donate a can of this, a package of this, look down this list, and maybe just one item, or a couple of items you could get. So look at that, we must get that groceries ready uh, for the convention. And we're getting a, someone of the people of God uh, gave an offering to the church to help us uh, to buy a brand new freezer for our church dining room that will replace all the antiquated refrigerators we're using. And we're going to have a new freezer in the dining room here to take care of a, a lot of... A lot of coming in, and I appreciate that. That's going to help us, help us to keep food better and uh, help those in the dining room. So we're thankful for a giving church. And then, uh, just remember this grocery list. But tonight, Brother Don Bush called me just before service. Oh, how we love Brother Bush. Yes, we do. He fell twice to them. And uh, he said, Brother Marlowe, I'm calling my son. And... Um, want to take me to the ER to see what I need to do. And let's pray for Brother Don Bush. Oh, how we miss him. Oh, how we miss him. He's such a lovely brother, a man of God. And it's uh, been such a blessing. And then Brother Terry Harrison had a miracle yesterday. Uh, Brother Terry is one of our older elders here. He's been with me, actually was here when I came to the church in 1960, as a young man, and um, he was here, and he's been here all these years, served, and we all love Brother Terry Harrison. He was driving yesterday, and he's been sick, been under a doctor's care. His wife, Debbie, is very sick, been under a doctor's care. They both don't even look like Terry and Debbie. They lost so much weight and, and a needing prayer, and um, he was going out to try to make a service call, and uh, he passed out driving about 65 miles an hour. And uh, his son, God let him take his son with him, Gary. And his son was in the service truck. Uh, thank God, uh, the will of God, the hand of God. And he passed out and slumped over the wheel, and his son, reached over and shook him and grabbed him and the dad wake up he came to immediately and he uh, got a hold of the wheel and he said I'm all right I'm all right and he kept driving but about uh, another five minutes or so he passed out again and this time he was heading toward uh, an open a ditch and and uh, some buildings and uh, but Gary wrestled the wheel and got, got him down to where he could put his foot down into the brake and touch the brake. 
and holding the wheel and that got him the, the vehicle to a halt. And you know, he wasn't hurt, there wasn't a crash, but he came off on the side of the road. And it was just the hand of God yes. that uh, Gary was in that. Doesn't God look after us? And uh, so Brother Harrison now is in the hospital, and they don't know uh, just what all is wrong with him. But uh, he's in the hospital at Blake in 207, and uh, he is um, needing our prayers that God will help him and give him strength and raise him up and get him back home again. And uh, the doctor told him he thought his working days were over. And uh, so we'll pray for Terry. All right? Uh, let's remember Sister Ellie. Uh, she's been out of service now for going to a week and had an infection. She's in Manatee. Manatee Memorial, but she's better. Some better. So, so let's remember her. And then Roy Ezell is doing better, but yet out of the woods. And uh, we want to remember Roy. Now, the, these are some that are just right in the forefront. Now, Sister Renee called in tonight, since she was sick. And Sister Ben uh, Foster, she yes. uh, called in uh, our sent word that yes. her, her immune system was just not letting her get among Amen. people and be here. So these are ones we need to pray for, don't we? Yes. yes. And there's others besides that. So we want to pray for all of God's people tonight, not just in Bradenton, but across the body of Christ, wherever the assemblies are, wherever the pastors are, where the men of God are. Uh, pray for the ministry and pray for all of God's people. That God will have mercy on us in this hour we live in and keep us in the hollow of his hand. Yes. Any other requests I need to be mindful of? Uh, remember the family of Floyd Healy. North Carolina, Floyd Healy passed away yesterday. He was my wife's youngest brother. That man, North Carolina, his brother-in-law, uh, brother, he can't. I advise him not to go up there. It's going to be very cold in Carolina this coming week. We're going to get some cold weather here, or colder weather. So I advise you not to go into that. But, uh, pray for your family, your brother-in-law's family. Sister Molina. Yes, uh, Sister Molina's uh, took ill, didn't she? Yes. All right. We, we miss her tonight <coughs> in the service uh, here. And all right, let's remember Sister Wayne and Brother Bernard. My mother, uh, brother, uh, his mother is not in good condition, and we want to pray much uh, for Bernard's mother, Miami, <coughs> Fort Lauderdale. <coughs> all right, Fort Lauderdale. All right, will there be another need, another request? <coughs> Praise God. Praise God. Brother Bill Sean. Sister Maddie and Sister May. May Ramsey and Sister Maddie Knight, uh, let's pray for them. Mary Hastings and the Courtney's daughter, pray for her. And uh, pray for all of God's people, right? So we're going to pray right now. We're really going to pray and ask God to help us. Help all of the people, wherever they are tonight, watch over them. Would you rise up with me in prayer and let's go to God right now. Father, we thank you. I thank you for this for the mercy of God and for all that you have done for us and all that you're doing for us. We pray tonight that you will uh, invest another night of blessing upon the people of God gathered here tonight and those that can't gather, those that are sick and afflicted. The Lord suffering tonight, Brother Harrison in Blake Hospital, oh God, Sister Ella in Manatee, Joy Gazelle in the nursing home, Barbara Hines, Lord, every one of your people, wherever they are tonight, the Lord is we know that you can do a miracle, the family in North Carolina. Everyone, 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 Sister Renee, 
every one of us, all of your people, all of the people we don't know, have mercy, have mercy, let there be a covenant of mercy tonight, look down upon your children here, look down upon the needs, look down upon every need, and Lord, give us grace, and give us help, and give us direction, and oh God, we give you the praise, in the name of Jesus, 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 oh God, look down upon your people, every need, every need, every need, every suffering, Everyone that has depression, everyone that has loneliness in their hearts, those that are broken in their spirit, in Jesus' name, I will give you the praise tonight, I will give you the praise tonight, I will give you the praise tonight, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your people, thank you for their giving, thank you for their love, thank you for all they have done. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the miracles. For the miracles. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a praise off. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Lord. We praise the Lord.
I really want the Lord to have his way. And you want him to have his way. And the only way he has his way is to let the Holy Ghost talk to each one of us and tell us when to stop, when to go, and what to be uh, saying and, yeah. and uh, encouraging and lifting up. And uh, that's what I want to do in my part. Uh, the vision of the Lord is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing in a person's life. And there's several scriptures that speaks of, of the vision. And what is vision? Well, you may define it one way and I another. But I believe that uh, we can come to a medium mind on it, that vision, and where I'm going right now is Proverbs 29 and 18, and the word vision stands out there uh, very, very strong. Uh, the 29th chapter, and it's the 18th verse, I believe, uh, where that, and we'll just sprinkle some of the word of God into the, uh, like Elijah did the meal, oh, yeah. into yes. the pot. Yes. So if there's been some prophets that put uh, any kind of wild gourds in the uh, meal preparation, uh, that we can rescue the meal from the poison gourds. Yes. That's what yes. Elijah did, wasn't he? Amen. And he, uh, he was yes. able to keep that from happening. And here in Proverbs, uh, the 20 ninth uh, chapter and verse 18 uh, it, it speaks of uh, the word vision uh, in, in verse uh, in verse 19 um, a, a servant uh, 18 rather uh, where there is no vision where is no vision where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he yes. where there is no vision the people perish now we know the word perish means to cease to exist doesn't it yes so when you perish uh you cease to exist uh you're done away with the word vision i was i had experience today i was walking down the corridor manatee memorial uh on my way to visit a patient there uh, sister Ella. And uh, for some reason, I noticed that I, I was, it looked like bright waves of the ocean was invading my eyesight. And uh, I, was, I, I began to wonder, well, what is this? What is going on with my vision? Because your vision is very important. <laughs> and if you lose your vision, you're going to be in a lot of trouble and you're going to have a lot of difficulties because vision is so important to the human being we are i like the headlights to the car in the night and uh, i kept noticing this and it was just a beautiful uh, golden ocean trying to invade my eye and uh, coming into my right and then into my left and then it was coming around my eyes and uh, i i kept walking and thinking well I, i'm not quite sure what my vision is doing uh, but uh, if there's anything drastically wrong, the rest of my body will begin to react and tell me. Uh, but I just kept walking, and you can't let fear take hold of you. I found out. I found out there's one thing that when you uh, when you go into a panic attack mode, you're in more trouble, or as much trouble as what may be happening to you. Amen. Amen. Whatever's happening to you, uh, if you can remain calm and steady and secure in your mind and your heart, and don't go into that panic a mode that you're destroyed, you're, you're lost, or you're dying, uh, or things are just not going to exist uh, for you. So I kept walking. Well, it went away. It just went away. Um, but as it gave me this lesson uh, when I got down in my car, and I thought, uh, my goodness, if that would have stayed in my vision and got more intense, and those waves would have come over my eye, whatever they were, in the, in, in the vision I was having, I would have been in deep trouble. Amen. Uh, but my vision cleared up. Hallelujah. And I was thankful for that. Amen. Uh, when your vision spiritually 
Let me define vision. I haven't done it, have I? Vision is your ability to see what you should see, no more than what you should see, but everything that you should see. That's vision. Your, your ability, the body's uh, ability to let you do that through the seeing eye and all that God created in that. And for you to be able to see what you need to see and no more than you should see, but everything that you should see, that's vision. That's clear vision. That's good vision. Uh, I'll, let, I'll go over that again. I want you to get that. Because uh, like I used that illustration, I was seeing things that I didn't need to see for a few moments, for a few minutes, about uh, 15 minutes or so that I went through that. And I was seeing some things that I didn't need to see. It was, it was a part of my vision that, that was troubling me. It was added to my vision. Uh, now, if I had lost part of my vision, then that would have troubled me. But uh, vision, it spiritually, is seeing exactly what God wants you to see and everything you should see and no more than you should see. Because if you're a babe in Christ and you begin to see too much vision without understanding, yes. without understanding, yes. then it confuses you yes, it and you become confused. So God does not feed a babe. Uh, he feeds them the sincere milk of the word, the sincere milk of the word, desire, the apostle Peter said, but desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Uh, a babe in Christ, that is a child just coming into Christ from the world into Christ, if they get too much, uh, then it would choke them even as it does a babe in the natural. Amen. Uh, they, so, so God in his wisdom wants you to see what you should see as you're growing. And then don't get worried or in a panic attack spiritually, emotionally, uh, because you're hearing somebody over here and they just seem to have all the knowledge there is in the world. They could just roll off the scriptures. They could just, they can take doctrine and take it apart. They could just go through one lesson after another. They can remember scriptures one after the other, uh, but you can't do that. Uh, well, remember, God will let you see what you need to see yes. if you're spiritually where you are and, and should be, yes. and no more than you should see Amen. for that moment. Amen. Remember, he's going to continue to feed you. Right. You're going to desire, uh, uh, David said, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. uh, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He leads me into green pastures. Yes. Uh, see, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, he, he, he feeds me. He uh, restores my uh, wants, my needs. Um, uh, you know, I, I shall not want, David said. So a vision, your vision is important because your vision, no matter how great it is, or how limited it is at the time, if it's a proper vision of everything that you need to see about God's word, about his plan, Amen. about the plan of the ages, about the, the church, your place in it, uh, your walk in it, the gifts God wants to place in your life, the way you should live, what is true holiness with God, what is true separation from sin, what are the gifts God wants to add to your life, you will see them and they will come into your mind Amen. as desiring the sincere milk if your vision is proper. Amen. Because without a vision, Solomon said in verse 18, uh, 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 if that, that uh, where there's no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Uh, then then uh, in the book of Habakkuk, the prophet Habakkuk, uh, over in uh, going toward the New Testament, uh, chapter 2, Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, uh, as you would pronounce it, 
But in the second chapter of the book of um, Habakkuk, uh, uh, verse 1, uh, he said, I will stand upon my watch. And the prophet, now the prophet of Habakkuk is a little harder to find than as, uh, the Proverbs would be. But if you just keep going toward um, Zechariah and you go through the minor prophet, you'll find the prophet Habakkuk. I will stand upon my watch, verse 1, chapter 2, and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. See, now without a vision, Proverbs said, Proverbs said, without a vision, without seeing what you need to see by the revelation of God in your life, without seeing what you need to see, you will stumble as a man in the darkness or a woman in the darkness, and you will fall and you'll hurt yourself. Um, but my cat took a little tumble here the other night and hurt himself a little bit. Uh, when you fall, you'll hurt yourself without a vision. See, able to penetrate what's ahead of you, on either side of you, horizontally, vertically. Uh, spiritually, God wants you to write the vision. One time you see the vision, write. How do you write the vision? You write it with the Spirit of God, not with ink, because in the book of Ephesians, Paul tells us, isn't it in Ephesians, I believe it is, that we are living epistles. We are living books, written and known of all men. See, but we become testimonies. We become testaments. Living, living testaments uh, that is written, and uh, God writes that, and he puts that in our spirit. He puts that in our heart. Did you know, if you hear something, and that's all that happens, it's of no value to you. Any part of the scriptures, this is God's holy word. It is the rod of God, the law of God. But if you just hear it, and you can't remember it ever, or it doesn't guide you ever, or it doesn't affect you ever, or you don't make decisions by it, or you don't decide what to do and what not to do by it, and it doesn't guide you every day of your life, every every moment, then it is of no value. It is just a book, as any other book of literature would be. But if you write it, a vision, you first have to have a vision. Amen. Well, everybody does, Brother Marlowe, that becomes a child of God, or comes in a church. No, no, they don't. If, if, if they did, this church would be the greatest church in the city. This church would dominate the whole east side of Bradenton. If everybody in this church had a vision, I'm not belittling anyone, I'm not taking away from anyone, but it's obvious that only a percentage of the people have a vision. Because if you have a vision, you won't leave the church. If you have a vision, you won't leave the church. You'll give up everything else, but you'll stay with the church. If you have a vision. If you don't have that, you'll make a decision to leave the church. Um, 